Hey guys, Chris from Propel here, and today we're gonna to be talking about the top low step bikes for 2020. A low step bike is really pretty similar to a standard frame bike, although it has a lower frame. So instead of having the top tube that you have to step over, the idea is that you can step through the frame and it makes it much easier to get on and off of. These bikes are really popular for people that have knee trouble or if they have hip problems and they can just step very easily in and out of the frame. Since electric bikes overall make bikes more accessible to more people, it only makes sense that you have more accessible electric bikes that make it easier to get on and off of and you know, make the bikes fit other riders. Maybe if you have a short inseam, it also helps with that because you're not too worried about what's normally called the standover height because when you stand over the bike, maybe you don't have so much clearance with that shorter inseam. So you can have a bike that fits you and also isn't in the way when you're not on the saddle. So a lot of people really appreciate that. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there might be thinking, that's a girl's bike and I can't see myself riding that. But more and more, it's becoming very popular for these bikes to be considered unisex bikes and really fitting for men and women. And we encounter this concern from a lot of people, but I would just let it go because because it's becoming more and more popular for men to ride low step bikes. It just makes sense. You know, why should you have a top tube just because you're a man? I don't know, not so necessary. Especially considering the low step bikes built these days are quite often just as sturdy as the standard frame style. So today I'm gonna to talk about our favorite bikes in our shop specifically. We carry a lot of different bikes and low step bikes are very popular. We deal with electric bikes specifically. We're talking about low step electric bikes and there's many different brands we offer. So I'm just gonna kind of do it in alphabetical order and call out some of my favorites and some of the ones that you might wanna consider if you're looking for a low step bike for yourself. The first bike I'd like to call out is called the Benno E-Joy. This bike was developed by Benno, who was most well known for founding Electra Bikes, which became a very popular bike brand in the US. And now he launched his own new brand called Benno after his own name. And the E-Joy is just a comfortable cruiser bike, 26 inch wheels, relatively wide tires. It's kind of a mix between a beach cruiser and a city commuter. It's set up with fenders, rack, lights, everything like that. Now this bike has the Active Line Plus motor on it, so it's 50 Newton meters of torque. It's not as powerful as some of the other bikes on this list. So if you don't need that much power, if you're looking for cruise around town and looking for something relatively affordable, this is a great bike to consider. The next bike I'd like to call out is called the Bulls Cross Light Evo. This bike's totally new for 2020. It's using the new Generation 4 Bosch CX motor. It's really one of the highest torque motors available on the market today. And this bike, it's kind of a hybrid bike, commuter bike, 20 mile an hour top speed, but it's 75 Newton meters of torque. So really powerful for getting you up the hills, standard derailleur and chain. And it has kind of a standard hybrid tire. It's like about an inch and a half. So it's not very wide, but it's good if you want that more traditional bike feel and you just want a lot of extra torque for climbing up hills. And this bike's available in several different frame styles. It's available in the standard frame, the mid-step frame, as well as the low step, but specifically we're focusing on the low step today. And it has all the accessories on it that make it a really great commuter bike as well with fenders, lights, rack, and all that. The next bike I'd like to call out is kind of a new class of low step bike and it's a hardtail electric mountain bike low step. This is the Bulls Copperhead Evo HD and HD for heavy duty. This bike's a low step bike but it's also made for heavier riders so it's a great consideration if you want an off-road bike that's a low step that's also capable of carrying a lot of weight. The 330 pound weight limit is much higher than what most bikes have of 250 or 275 pounds. Great consideration if you're a little bit heavier or if you just want something really heavy duty that can handle some off-road riding because that tends to put some more extreme forces on the bike's frame and having a low step is quite often it can make the bike frame not as strong and when you have certain reinforcements oftentimes bike manufacturers can make those frames still just as stable as a standard triangle. The next bike on my list has been very popular and it's called the Gazelle Arroyo Elite. 
Now, this bike was originally just the Arroyo, and they made it the Arroyo Elite when they integrated the power tube battery. They made some updates to the frame. So now it's an integrated battery. It has a active line plus motor on it, so 50 newton meters of torque. Not the most powerful motor, but really great for around the city and that sort of thing. I would call this bike really a Dutch commuter style bike. Now, Gazelle is a Dutch brand. They're set up really in this more upright sort of seating position. It has an adjustable stem, so if you want to sit really upright, that's a great bike for that sort of thing. I reviewed this bike earlier last year with Court from Electric Bike Review, and it's really an awesome bike. It has an internally geared hub with the chain case. Now, it doesn't have a belt drive as some of these bikes on this list have, but the chain case really keeps the chain very well protected. So it's a great type of bike if you're riding in a environment that's often rainy or dirty and it keeps that chain really clean, especially when coupled with the internally geared hub on that bike. So great consideration if you want a great low maintenance, really easy to operate and very upright, comfortable style bike. So really nice consideration. The next bike, it would be considered kind of the value priced low step bike and it's called the Gazelle Medeo T9. Now this bike is $2,500 and it's the least expensive bike on our list and it's been very popular for us. It has the Active Line Plus motor on it, same as the Arroyo and some of the other models with the 50 Newton meters of torque, which is a good baseline. You know, if you're a relatively fit rider, I think you can handle really the largest of hills, but if your fitness level isn't that high, you might want to consider getting a bike with a little bit more torque to it to give you an easier time on some of the larger hills. But really, for the most part, pretty much all these bikes will get you up the hill. It's just a matter of how fast and how much effort from you, the rider, it will require. Now, the Medeo T9 is available in a couple different frame styles, the standard frame as well as the low step. But as you know, this video is about low step bikes, we're going to talk about that. Now this doesn't have the traditional wave frame as the Arroyo does, which has that second top tube, but it's much lower. So the entry is not as low as some of the other bikes, but it's still, from my book, considered a low step bike and definitely a great consideration. This has a traditional derailleur on it, relatively upright seating position, and this has a rear rack battery on it. The next bike, is the Gazelle Ultimate T10. This bike's been very popular. It's a really sporty low step bike. It's relatively lightweight and it has the new generation three performance line motor. Now this motor has 65 Newton meters of torque, which is pretty powerful. I mean, a 30% bump from the active line plus motor. So you can think of it in those terms, like climbing some of those larger hills, you have a 30% easier time, particularly in the higher levels of assistance. So that torque is really helpful for those sort of scenarios. And also starting out, you get a little bit more oomph off the line. And a lot of people really appreciate that, especially operating in an urban environment, or you just want to have a more sporty bike and have that more active feel to the experience. So that's a great consideration. Traditional uh, derailleur, but actually pretty high spec. It's a Shimano XT derailleur on there. It has a low travel uh, head shock suspension fork. So the Ultimate T10 is great for somebody that wants that really sporty, active ride experience, keep it pretty lightweight. Maybe you're coming from a road bike or something like that. Sure, this bike's gonna have a wider tire on it, but you have an electric motor, so you're not really feeling that additional resistance you might get from that slightly wider tire than you had on your road bike. But really the Ultimate T10 is really great if you're switching from a road bike or something a little bit more sporty. You still want that really sporty, active experience, feel the road with the slightly wider tires, but not as wide as some of the bikes. It has an adjustable stem, so you can adjust it exactly to the type of riding position that you want. If you want to ride more upright, plenty capable for that. But if you want to ride in a more sporty position, you can drop the stem down a little bit to get you in that more forward position. The next bike on the list is the Mustache Lundy. This bike is really special to me because it was introduced in 2011 in the same year that I actually started my shop. I've always been really drawn to this design and I think a lot of people feel similar as well. It's got really simple lines to it and it's got color match fenders, 
with these double wall aluminum fenders, a rigid fork, but the bike is still really comfortable, mainly because your ride position. It has these really special handlebars, which are unique to Mustache. They make them themselves and you sit in this upright seating position, but most of the comfort comes from the tires. They're 2.35 inches wide, it's a 26 inch, and it's a balloon tire, so you can run them at lower pressure. You might be looking at that frame and thinking that it's not gonna be strong enough, but they have a unique tubing that they use, and inside of the tube, they have another round tube, and they have an X for additional rigidity. I'd also like to mention another new bike for Mustache. It's called the X-Road Open. Now, Mustache introduced several new low-step bikes for their lineup this year, and one of the most popular ones is the X-Road, and it's available in several different models and they have what's called open, and open means that it's a low step, it's a traditional low step, so really easy to get on and off of. This bike's really great for that all-terrain type of usage. It's great on-road, off-road, but it still has fenders, rack, lights, and everything else, so if you want a commuter bike that's also capable of some dirt roads and just going out exploring, this is a great choice. And up next, we have the Risa Mueller Nevo. This bike is actually the most popular low-step bike in our shop, and partly because it's got so many different options, and it has a lot of features on it that you won't find on other low-step bikes. One of them is it's available as a high-speed bike. That, there are practically no other bikes on the market that are low-step and high-speed or specifically with the Bosch motor. So I'm really excited about that. You can get the belt drive version with the Enviolo or roll-off hub, which is really cool. And it's also available with two batteries. So you have one internal battery and you have one external battery. And I have another exciting thing to share about the Nevo because actually the day that we're filming this is the day after they actually just released that the Nevo 3 is now available. So the Nevo 3 is now with the Bosch Generation 4 motor. It's available with the CX motor as well as the high-speed motor. So both of those motors are really the highest performance motors in the Bosch lineup. And now they have an internal battery available as 500 watt hour or 625 watt hour as well as the option to add additional rear rack battery to extend the battery capacity up to 1125 watt hours, which is really large capacity. So if you're looking to do those really long rides, this could be a great option. So this is the sort of bike that you want to consider if you want a low step bike that's a high speed bike, you want a low step bike with a really large battery capacity, or you want some of these additional options like having a belt drive or uh, really just having a heavy duty bike that's capable of so much. I should mention, as I said, heavy duty, this bike is also available for heavier riders. So if you wanted to get the heavy duty package, it's able to accommodate up to 353 pounds because of its heavy duty pedals, the heavy duty saddle, as well as the seat post, which can accommodate heavier riders as well. The Nevo also comes standard with really wide tires, so it's the type of bike that you wanna ride on-road, off-road, you'll really have no trouble with it, as long as you're not going on these more extreme mountain bike trails. You might start to feel some of the limitations of a slightly heavier bike that's not really set up for that sort of thing. But if you wanna go on dirt roads, some light mountain bike trails, I think you'll find this bike to be really capable. So the sibling to the Nevo is called the Homage, and basically it's the Nevo with full suspension. So it has rear suspension as well as front suspension with all the same options, those wide tires, comfortable ride position. And this is really the only low step bike that we offer with full suspension and one of the only ones on the market actually. It's also available with the Enviolo hub, the roll-off hub, with the high-speed motor as well as the CX motor for that really high torque. So it's a great consideration if you want a lot of different options and still have that full suspension and low step. A just great combo overall. A new addition to our low step lineup this year could be considered a low step bike, could be considered a compact bike, or maybe it's a combination of the two. It's called the Turn HSD. And this bike is really special in that it's compact, it can carry a lot, 
the cargo carrying capacity of the rear rack is up to 130 pounds. You can carry a small child or a small passenger on it, as well as all different other options to carry all sorts of cargo. So it's a really great bike if you want a compact bike, fits all different rider heights and many different drivetrains, including one that's fully automatic. And that's been very popular for us because I think some people just don't want to really shift. Really, most cars in the U.S. have automatic transmission, so why not on a bicycle? I think this is a great bike if you need something smaller that you maybe fit inside your apartment, you want to be able to put inside your car or SUV or something like that. Or another great thing about this bike is it can fit many different rider heights, starting somewhere around four foot 11, five foot, upwards of six foot five. So having that ability to share between many different riders is a great ability of this specific bike. And the HSD also kind of has a big brother, which is called the GSD. The GSD is just capable of carrying a bit more, has wider tires on it. Both of them are 20 inch wheels, but the GSD has a 2.4 inch wide tire up from 2.15 on the HSD. And the GSD can carry 200 pounds on the back of it up from 130 pounds on the HSD. So although these bikes might not be traditionally considered low step, the standover, the entry is pretty low, so really easy to get on and off of. The last bike on my list uh, starts with the X and it's called the Extra Cycle E Swoop. The E Swoop is designed based on their traditional Extra Cycle Edge Runner frame, but they just lowered that top tube to make it easier to get on and off of. The E Swoop is really popular for families. It makes it really easy to get on and off the bike when it's loaded up on the back, especially with that double kickstand because the bike can stand up on its own even with kids on it, which is a really nice feature of that setup. The E Swoop has a 20 inch wheel in the rear for lower center of gravity for cargo hauling and a 26 inch wheel for a little bit easier handling and faster rolling. This bike is available with two different motor systems, the CX motor or the high speed motor, as well as different battery options. You can get it with one standard 400 watt hour power pack, or you can get it with up to two 500 watt hour power packs for a thousand watt hours of battery range. So that's a really great option if you wanna go long or use a lot of assistance, maybe you're in a hilly area and that sort of thing. But it's definitely worth considering if you want a low step bike that's also capable of carrying a lot more with a 200 pound weight capacity on that rear rack. So I think that's about it for my list. You know, we covered a lot of different bikes. It's certainly not all the low step bikes that are available on the market, but I wanted to discuss with you, you know, some of the more popular ones in our shop. So you can have some considerations if you're looking for a low step for yourself or maybe for somebody else. Now you might also see these bikes defined as wave frame as well. That's also another name that's used for a low step bike. But overall, I think it's a great consideration and I hope that you enjoyed this video and you found it to be helpful. If you have a favorite low step bike or if you have any questions about low step electric bikes or electric bikes in general, leave them in the comments below or reach out. We're always happy to help and I look forward to seeing you in the future. Well, see you soon. Every Royal Dutch Gazelle is built on 125 years of experience. They're an icon for Holland and far beyond. When it comes to the evolution of the Dutch bike, we haven't just been along for the ride, we led the way. Our bikes are comfortable, safe and cleverly designed. They're built with passion, out of the belief that things can always be done better. That's why today's Gazelle anticipates tomorrow. So, if you want to enjoy the ride, ringing your bell, wearing your casual clothes, transporting anything and everything from groceries to children, and using e-power to make steep hills feel as flat as Holland, choose the one and only true Dutch bike, a Royal Dutch Gazelle. Every Royal Dutch Gazelle bike is given four coats of paint 
so a real gazelle can definitely handle the odd knock. Every year, around 1 million frames and components travel 1.6 kilometers through our paint shop, the longest paint shop in the world. Here, the highest quality paint is applied in six hours. How do we do it? To ensure a smooth finish, we check for irregularities first. The frames and other components are degreased and a conversion coating is applied. This not only ensures the powder coating will stick easily, it also prevents the bike from rusting. After that, we apply a base powder coating which works like a base coat of paint by positively charging the base powder and negatively charging the frame or component, the powder only goes where it's needed, so we waste next to nothing. In the oven, the powder melts to form an even base coat of paint, and once it has cooled, the bike is ready to be coloured. We always apply two layers of colour, which also means it has to go back into the oven another two times. Some bikes even have a second colour as well. Every year, we use 70,000 kilograms of paint for this. Finally, every bike is given its own design by hand. Whether it's classical or contemporary, this is true precision work. And to finish it all off, a final layer of tough, clear paint. At Royal Dutch Gazelle, we have made our factory very efficient so that we are able to produce 275,000 bikes a year. A bike is loaded onto the truck every 30 seconds, ready to go to our dealers. So, how do we keep up the pace? Good preparation. Before we put a bike together, we make sure that all of the parts are ready and on standby. Every day in pre-assembly, we make around 900 front forks from 21,000 components of all types and sizes. Every year, we use 344 kilometers of chain from which we make a chain to fit every bike. And we do the same thing with the cables, which we then tuck away neatly inside the frame. And before we get everything ready to finish off the assembly of our bikes, in one go, we put our badge on the front. That way, every bike is a true gazelle. At Royal Dutch Gazelle, we make 275,000 bikes a year. And of course, that means we need twice as many wheels, which is more than half a million. We put these wheels together ourselves in our factory. First, we guide the spokes into the right place in the wheel. Next, we apply pressure to the wheel, which makes the spokes position themselves properly. And to be sure of a smooth ride, we tighten the spokes to true the wheel. We keep doing this until we are sure the wheel is perfectly round. The final step, of course, is the tyre. Pump up the inner tube, fit the tyre, and it's good to go. At Royal Dutch Gazelle, our assembly line is the most modern in the world. This is where all the parts come together. The frame starts its journey along the assembly line with the front fork and the handlebars fitted. All of the parts from our paint shop and pre-assembly are ready and waiting. Step by step, with precision and attention to detail, around 25 assembly line staff fit and check each component. The mudguard, the wheels, the battery, to create a perfect gazelle. Every 90 seconds, another bike rolls off the assembly line, which has a monorail leading directly into the truck, ready to go to one of our Gazelle dealers. And because we have three of these modern assembly lines at Royal Dutch Gazelle, that makes one every 30 seconds. At Royal Dutch Gazelle, Quality is paramount. That's why we test our bikes continuously in our test lab, where we can carry out over 129 different tests. Our test bikes travel at least 18,000 kilometers while they are there, so our roller conveyor is running day and night. And because roads and cycle paths aren't always smooth, our bikes are left to vibrate for days. 
We simulate two years of changeable weather in just seven days with our salt spray bath. That way, we can ensure our bikes can withstand all weather conditions without rusting. To be sure that our electrical components are waterproof, we can put them into a water column with five bars of pressure. That is the equivalent of riding a bike to England along the bottom of the North Sea. We test our colors using prolonged exposure to UV light. We simulate sunlight to ensure our bikes won't lose their color. And we check if our bikes can handle anything that could happen on the road on our own test track. Cobbles, sudden braking and sharp bends. We also monitor the quality of the production process. We test a random 5% sample of all the bikes we make. That is a sample of almost 14,000 bikes per year. And we're only satisfied when everything is right because only a perfect bike deserves the name Gazelle. Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Hey, we're downtown Long Beach and we're checking out a new one from Gazelle. This is the Arroyo C8 Elite. And we've actually got the original Arroyo C8 here. These are both North America bikes that we're checking out. And I'm hanging out with Chris Nolte from Propel Bikes. Hey guys. Good day, man. It's been interesting because as you can see, it's a little bit rainy and wet, but we got those fenders, we got the lights. These are perfect bikes from the Netherlands, ready to deal with just about anything. <laughs> They're a little more used to that weather yeah. than they are out here in uh, Southern California. So. It was a good choice for today, right? You know, we, we're always looking at different bikes together and um, I really appreciate your insights because you've been selling these for a while now. When did you pick up Gazelle? Um, shoot, I guess it's been, it's been several years now. You know what happened? They, they were managed by a different distributor, but then they took it in-house and they're all managed by Gazelle USA, who's owned by Gazelle or Pond Group. The Pond Group, yeah. And um, yeah, it's been a great brand to work with. And, you know, we really appreciate the heritage and the designs that they implement where they're really made for this like comfortable riding and, and something that's very familiar, more utilitarian sort of riding. It's great for commuting and that sort of thing. Which is excited to have them over here. It's cool. I mean, this company has been around since like 19 or 1892. 1892. So way yeah. back, 160 Over. plus years yeah. at this point. And they're they're recognized. I'm just gonna, I gotta show you guys this, it's pretty cool. They got the little badge here. So yeah, 1892 and it's a Royal Dutch brand. That's what the little crown is about. So that's a designation that the Royal family offers to companies that have been around for over 100 years that are offering a good product and maybe some sustainability mindset just something that represents their culture uh well and and these bikes definitely do a good job gazelle is known for being high quality they do like uv testing on their paint and, and kind of overexposure and salt water testing and stuff because those are the environments that they deal with so having that here in america where yeah it also rains it also we we got the ocean just down the street yeah yeah for it's, sure it's nice to have um you know you do pay a little bit more for some of these premium bikes but they're partnered with bosch in this case we've got a bosch active line plus motor you can see the badging on this side really nice design on this thing it's it's very compact it's 7.1 pounds versus the older um still still in circulation but the performance line motors they're more like mountain bike level uh, a little bit louder maybe not quite as efficient in terms of power usage and i want to come over here because another one of the big upgrades is that battery but they are still distributing the the c8 right there and this one has the performance line just like we're talking about so 8.8 .8 pounds versus 7.1 a little bit louder a little bit more power hungry and it has a smaller size sprocket. So it spins at two and a half revolutions uh, per every crank revolution. And that creates a little bit of like reduction gear drag. You're not gonna have that over here, even though you can't really see it because they got this really nice fully enclosed plastic chain cover. This is a 36 tooth cassette, just standard size. So every single crank revolution gets a single revolution of the chain ring. You can pedal it backwards. Again, you can't really see that, but the chain is actually cycling through here. 
and it's just a little bit more familiar. It's a more standardized system, and I like that. You know, it's kind of neat to see that. You're getting a little bit less torque, so this one offers 63 Newton meters of torque, whereas here, we're down to 50 Newton meters of torque, but it's still very capable for this type of application. And we have an internally geared hub here. This is the Shimano Nexus Inter 8. We've got a half grip twist shifter here that can be uh, updated on, even at standstill. So we're not hurting the bike by shifting gears here. And let's say that you're riding around town and you have to come to an unexpected stop, maybe just a traffic signal, you can shift down and then you can really empower that mid-drive motor. So you'll notice that the weight on this bike is really well positioned low and center, including the battery. We got the power tube 500 right here built into that down tube versus this original C8. That's just, that's just frame right there and the battery is up high, okay? This is a Power Pack 500, it's the same capacity, but that weight, about 6.3 pounds, is up high and it's, it's gonna create the potential for a little bit more frame flex and the, the bike's just rear heavy. It takes up some of the capacity of the rack, so if you wanna have like a child seat or a cargo or panniers or something, this rack's completely freed up and it's up to 27 kilograms of weight, which is roughly 60 pounds pretty impressive and we were talking about some of those child seats like Thule Yep has one that clamps onto this pretty well yeah so the the traditional Yep style this actually has a window which would accommodate it here which is really great and then for the new style the next style any XXT that has a clamps which actually grab the outsides of the rack which is more a little bit more universal but the great thing about this is generally speaking the the child seats are, can accommodate up to 45 pounds, yeah. but the child seat itself can weigh upwards of 10 pounds. Mm. So at that point, you're about 55 pounds. So something like this, you can have the, the child seat, a child at 45 pounds, and you can also have some cargo on it. So it can actually Fantastic. handle all that weight where a lot of times racks more commonly are gonna be rated around 40 pounds or so. I so see. you can't really have that full use of that capacity. So really smart of them and, and you could tell that they're really thinking of the utility and the use scenarios of you know carrying children which is quite common and the style like check this out we've got a little support arm here that's color matched to the frame and so many times these racks they've got like silver like mounts that go here right and 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 they aren't quite as well supported below i think this one actually has like a metal piece that goes under the fender right there. So it's just, it's much more stylish. These fenders are also a big highlight for me. Yeah, are you go ahead and do that. He's gonna turn on the display and activate the lights. Look at this, so we got what appears to be four little LEDs and these light tubes. So you can see this thing from the side and it just gives you a much better visual footprint, including reflective sidewall stripes on those tires, including puncture resistance on the tires. Here's the front fender slash light and it's got the same little light tube and then that really bright, awesome headlight. So I like that. The only complaint I have about this is that they've got this little 30 millimeter monoshock thing. It's, I don't think it's super adjustable. There might be a little bit of preload adjust under that cuff, but you know, you're not getting a ton of suspension travel, but it's plenty for on-road. It's, it's better than nothing. And I was gonna say the fender and the light could be bouncing around a little bit versus if they were mounted up here a little bit higher. But since you've got this really awesome, extra tall adjustable angle gazelle switch stem, which you can adjust, you just slide this down and then kind of pull up the lever. Chris might do it for us here. Yeah. Look at that. So you can, you can adjust this on the fly. Maybe this is a family bike or maybe you feel sporty on your way to work and then after work, the traffic's heavy and you wanna be more heads up. This is that Dutch, like very upright, comfort-oriented uh, body position. Sweat back handlebars, ergonomic grips. They've even got like a, a little like twister bell thing built in, which I think is really cool. And then an additional reflector up high. So there's just, there's a lot of safety going on with this thing. And I really appreciate that. And then back to style, they have three frame colors. There's like dark blue, this kind of green, which, which looks really nice, you know, where, where we're at right now, it's just kind of like office park, government buildings and stuff. And, and this, this really fits in, it's very elegant. And then I think they also have silver. So silver would be uh, really visible from the side, just even more reflective, but they're all sort of a matte, uh, which, you know, is, is neat. Some of the other Gazelle bikes have been a little bit shiny. You can see that here with the Arroyo C8, kind of a still maybe satin, not quite gloss. We were looking at a couple other models the other day that are a little bit more affordable, but they've dropped the price on the C8. This is $31.99 now, and then this is $35.99. So you're paying a little bit extra. It's like, what are you getting? The integrated lights are really nice. You've got a kind of an upgrade 
when it comes to the whole bike with, with that integrated power to battery. So the weight distribution that we talked about and then the appearance of this thing, much more, more like a bike and then freeing up that rear rack and a couple little updates. One of the things that I really like that both of these bikes have is the hydraulic rim brakes. So these are the Magura HS22 with adjustable reach, tool free. So you can bring these in if you have smaller hands or you're wearing gloves on a cold day. I really appreciate that. And then rim brakes, it's sort of a, a hardware feature or component that I'm not used to seeing in the United States as much. And I, I was curious because I've always celebrated like disc brakes. Those were the big thing when I was growing up with mountain bikes and it kind of, it lifts the braking surface so it's not gonna get as dirty if you ride through a puddle or dusty trail, but you don't get the same mechanical advantage as you do with, with a rim brake or a linear pull brake. And you know, hydraulic is really nice because it's not gonna stretch like mechanical. So these, these benefit from mechanical advantage. They benefit from hydraulic being easy to pull and consistent both on the left and right levers. And if you park at a bike rack, a disc brake rotor can get bent, you know, like say there's a tube right here, a bar that you're going to lock, lock to, disc brakes are vulnerable. So apparently that's why they do that in the Netherlands and in other parts of Europe. These hydraulic rim brakes are pretty popular and they've got like a little release lever. So it's a little bit easier to change, change a flat tire or whatever, but that shouldn't be an issue because we got the Schwabi Energizer Plus. These are 700C, which is like 28 inch by 1.75, a little bit wider, even though they're fairly slick for urban environments to be grippy but but smooth not going to make a lot of noise not going to be creating a lot of friction the way a mountain bike tire would so it's a great combination and then they say 50 km so rated to go a little bit faster the new addicts rubber and then the g guard 5 that's the puncture protection we're talking about and look at these rims they've got reinforcement eyelets interesting spoke pattern here these are extra strong 14 gauge black they match that internally geared hub and coming back to the bike rack situation you don't have a disc brake rotor that can get bent and you don't have a derailleur hanging down that can get kicked or if the bike tips it's it's all inside that internally geared hub at the rear and then this is a horizontal sliding dropout so you can tension that chain the chain's completely clean it's it's picked up it stays stays off the street and off of your pants we are riding around with pants today because it's you know it's cold and we're just trying to stay warm and this bike's keeping us clean and comfortable so we were talking about that monoshock up here we're talking about the ergonomics we've also got a suspension seat post this is postmodern 27.2 millimeters not a ton of travel but enough and then a really nice saddle i'm a big fan of this this is a Selly royal hz and i think that's a, a hers saddle i you know we're looking at kind of the euro specs and stuff um, i'm trying to give you as as good of details as i can including this little shim see that silver piece the seat tube itself is a unique width it's or diameter it's 29.8 millimeters whereas the post is 27.2 so they need that shim to sort of tighten it up a little bit you know it gets the job done and maybe this thicker tube or this like larger tube gives the frame a little bit more strength we we're talking about frame flex earlier having a little bit more weight high and towards the rear with that battery this one still has a little bit of frame flex chris will you grab the handles and just like shake the bike you know so it's like it's it's not too bad. I mean, you you know, there. Thank you. He's he's really doing a good job. I mean, this I can... is this is really pushing it. But <laughs> I think I think overall, actually, my experience that they do a really good job and they intentionally design the bike in a specific way and the reinforcement here and making this all one piece and including the the rack portion in that. Yeah. Um. That that was a really big deal to kind of limit that. But generally speaking, that is one of the challenges with the. Uh, low step bike like this that you will have uh, frame flex so well, great point you brought up the Medeo that we had the other day yeah. it has the two the double down tube yeah and it has the rack battery and I there was a little frame flex and there was a little bit of speed wobble even when I was going faster down the hill because yeah. I was upright and back I haven't had that so much on this one this is it's definitely a step up in terms of design um, I, I've really enjoyed riding this bike and I feel like they've kind of dotted all the i's and crossed all the t's it's it's totally feature complete you got the fender you don't you don't even have to buy many accessories the one thing it doesn't have <laughs> bottle cage bosses no bottle cage bosses i feel like you don't even have to tell them that course <laughs> yeah, you know? i know <laughs> it's a minor thing and you know it, we, we all drink water you could put you could have a trunk bag or sometimes you get like a cup holder right up here for your coffee that would be really nice I just don't understand. I mean, and maybe it's back to that frame flex thing. That's part of why I'm bringing it up right now is because, you know, you don't want to reduce the strength of the frame, but they do have like an anywhere adapter from SKS. It's like a little clamp thing that creates bottle cage bosses. You could use that for a folding lock or for water. 
this isn't exactly like a sport bike quite as much as commuting and, and neighborhood, but it, it's a really nice one. Yeah, yeah, I like I it. Can we do the, the battery thing real quick? Cause we got yeah, this cool sure. defender lock. This is called a cafe lock or a frame lock. And he's, he's creating, yeah, so, sliding yeah. it down. Hopefully you can see there's like a silver bar that goes through. It's a little bit locked, but basically it secures the rear wheel. So people can't just ride off with your bike, giving you enough security to slip into the cafe and get your coffee or whatever. But that same key, look at that, goes into a little locking core on that side. And then here it's unlocked, but it's not unlocked all the way. And you might wonder like, why is it not pulling off? Yeah. You actually have to release this little lever here and it's kind of for security to prevent the battery from popping out on its own. Um, Unexpectedly. If you, if you forget to lock it. There we go. And there's the little interface. That was a great example, Chris. There's a little button pad that he was pressing on top. I, I really like that they've got the locking core up high along with the charging port because this battery can be charged on the bike. There it is. See, th that's out of the way. Some of the other bikes, they put that stuff down here and I just feel like it could get kicked easier, you know, if you're bumping these pedals or something. So I like that the kind of the sensitive bits are up high. You've got the same interface on the base of the battery right there. So you could charge this off of the bike. There's even a little LED five tick uh, charge level indicator. Can I hand that to you? Yeah, for sure. It's about six point, I think it's 6.8 pounds or something like that. It does weigh a little bit more than the rack battery. And some of that's because it's got this nice alloy casing and stuff. It's just, it's a beautiful design. Lithium ion cells, 36 volt, 13.4 amp hours for roughly 500 watt hours of capacity. There we go. And to really take care of this thing, you want to store it in a cool, dry location. Uh, and he's struggling with this a little bit because you got to unlock the core again. You can't just force it in. Um, I think that's a, a pretty good overview. I'm going to put the key back in and when I do, I'm going to release that little lock there. And now the key won't come out. So you kind of have to leave it in the bike. And for me, that's not a, a huge deal until you start to think about the user scenarios here. Like you lock the bike and then you've got this key that's not on a keychain, so you don't want to lose it. On the other hand, maybe you do put it on your keychain, but now your whole keychain's like jingling around and bumping into the tires. So it's, eh, there are some other cafe locks out there where you can take the key out, but apparently this is like a Netherlands thing. Maybe it's a part of the standard that they have. Yeah, it seems to be. And uh, yeah, I kind of prefer the, the alternative, but um, but yeah, it's, it's not a huge thing. And, and I guess if somebody really wanted to, you could potentially swap it out. But... And I'm just trying to scrutinize this and look yeah. at all the little details and be consistent across the reviews that I do. So here's the display. This is the Bosch Purion. It's a tiny little display, fairly easy to reach, and it leaves that cockpit clean for maybe adding that little cup holder we talked about earlier. There's a power button on top, so I just pressed it, and you can actually see the backlighting right now. If we want to turn off the headlight and the tail light, we just hold that plus button for a second. There we go. But the display itself is still backlit, so that you can't really turn that off. Um, and that's kind of fine. It works. Uh, there's a plus and a minus, and that allows you to adjust assist level. And then there's a walk mode button. There's also a little micro USB port built into the side of it, but it's not really functional for charging. It's just for diagnostics and software updates, which is disappointing to me because, you know, sometimes it's nice to have uh, a functional one. And that is the case over here. So we've got the Bosch Intuvia. This display is larger. It's removable. It's got the functional USB. It's larger, easier to see. And it does still work with the switch, but it, it might kind of get in the way a little bit. You have to tip it forward if you're going to do the adjustments. So I've seen more and more bikes moving to that little compact display. You know, and again, it gets the job done, but you miss out on some things. It doesn't have your trip distance, or I think it's like average speed, max speed. It doesn't have a power indicator. It doesn't have a little clock or trip time. That's it. But it does have the other readouts. So we've got speed right there in the top. If you hold minus and tap the power button, it'll switch from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and back. And then down here, we've got that five tick battery infographic, much like we saw on the battery itself. So it's 20% steps, which isn't super precise. And that's where it's nice that they have a range estimate here. So if I press the plus button, we go from off to eco. Now it says, okay, we estimate you can go 68 miles. If you ride like you've been riding, it takes the last mile of riding into account. So that's pretty cool. Press plus again, tour, sport, turbo. Turbo is the highest level of assist and it's way down to 26 miles. So it's, it's cool. It's much more precise than the battery infographic. You hold minus again, it shows your level of assist. 
minus again. We got your trip distance, and if you want to clear that, you hold plus and minus. And then you can hold minus again for total distance, 54 miles. So that's kind of cool. Um, the other thing about this, I, I kind of skipped over because it's windy and it's rainy, and you know, we're doing our best out here, but I didn't really talk about the motor a whole lot. Um, and I really think that Bosch deserves some extra attention here because they've done a great job. This mid-drive here, it's using the same sort of sensor control systems that a lot of the other higher-end Bosch motors do as well. It's, it's not really skimping. It measures the rear wheel speed right there with the little sensor, pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second. It's also listening for your pedal strokes and, and kind of like this wave of pedal input. And then if there's a spike, it says, okay, they must be shifting gears. So it releases some of the power so that you're not gonna create a derailment or stress the chain or grind the gears as much. And Bosch has done an update, I think in like 2017, 2018, where it even does shift detection for internally geared hubs, which is phenomenal. So it's still not perfect. I still kind of ease off when I'm shifting gears. And sometimes if you try to shift and you're really pedaling hard, you'll kind of hear a and it just, it won't work. I've also learned online that if you go to the fourth gear and then you line up that little yellow dot with that other dot, that's how you can adjust this. So you can kind of uh, basically tune this up yourself. That otherwise it's fairly sealed, it's clean, it's durable. I think that's kind of it, you guys. Again, I'm, I'm sorry if it feels like I'm rushing a little bit. I'm just trying to keep us dry and survive here. Do you feel like I missed anything, Chris? No, I mean, I, I think that's more or less it. You know, we talked a little bit about the ride position, which I think is something really important there. And yep. and that, that easy entry, which I think that's something that sometimes even an expert like yourself can <laughs> kick the, you know. You're get, so right. I didn't even. It's like, ah, oh, yeah, trying to hop on the bike like this, you <laughs> yeah. know, but, but really it's so designed just to be able to hop on. And, and then even sometimes I find, you know, like come to a light and hop off the bike really quickly. Um, and, it, and it really makes it quite nice. But uh, I love the low standover height. Yeah. And the three frame sizes. So, I mean, we, it's all of that stuff is, is easy to just kind of overlook but that's part of the higher price. These guys do sell through shops. They've got that comprehensive two-year warranty, as well as like a 10-year frame warranty. Right, and the bikes are built in the Netherlands, which is a pretty big deal. I mean, considering all the stuff that, you know, it's just manufactured and, you know, in, in, a, in a different way, uh, they, they put a lot into their bikes and it's a real attention to detail, which I really respect them for. I, I agree, man. I've seen some of the videos. There's a guy like painting the pinstripes on one of the bike. I mean, there's there's a certain level of craftsmanship here that you do notice when you uh, when you ride one in person. So I think that's that's what we should do. Maybe hop on this thing, get wet, go for a little ride, <laughs> try not to get run over. This motor system is super quiet, so I'm going to take it all the way up to turbo. It's the highest level of assist and uh, that's gonna allow you to maybe hear it, but with all the traffic and stuff, you'll just have to take my word for it. Like, the performance line is louder, and part of that's the, you know, two times, two and a half R RPM boost from the reduction gearing. By the way, this bike's about 58 pounds. We were weighing it earlier, and that's not too bad, considering all the accessories and the bigger battery and the power tube design. Wow, look at the art. The wind's kind of blowing the tiles and stuff. Definitely appreciating those fenders right now. Let's see how Chris is doing. Looking good, buddy. You wanna turn on your lights real quick? idea this one this one also has the side cutout but it's just not quite as pronounced they're both aimable would you mind switching bikes with me yeah let's do it let's see here so Chris is just on tour taking it easy I'm gonna go up to turbo and lead on I don't know if you could hear it but it is a little bit louder I'm just gonna right. turn here oh there we go There we go, there's that tail light we were talking about. I wanna go on your right this time.
Okay guys, it's kind of a boring view on this bike because you can't even see the chain, but we've got a 36 tooth chain ring up front, 18 tooth in the rear, and again, one to one. So we've got a standard size chain ring here. I'm gonna pedal through, I'm gonna ride in turbo mode just so it's super pronounced. And then I wanted to call out that this comes with the faster four amp Bosch charger, which is really nice. Uh, weighs about 1.7 pounds, easy to take with you. So coming back to that battery, take it up into the office to charge or maybe inside if you have to leave the bike outside um, or just in a place where there isn't really an outlet. Maybe it's a covered garage or something like that. It's nice to keep the battery in the cool, dry location because those extreme temperatures are tough on it. But you'll also want to try to store it at like half full and avoid going, you know, basically stay between 20 and 80% just to not, not stress those cells. Um, yeah, I'm going to hop on this thing, paddle around and let you see what it's all about. rim brakes are working really well and I, I wanted to also mention that this motor it supports up to 105 rpm versus the performance line on the older c8 it goes up to 120 because it's a performance motor so this one it, it can't support quite as fast spinning but in a city environment I don't know if that's it's not really a big deal you know we've got that internally geared hub which is durable a little bit heavier but it's not a super fast shifting thing it's just not a performance bike so for me this is more about durability and comfort and stuff and it's definitely getting the job done i'm loving the suspension seat post okay the goal with this view is to show you that fender and just to give you some idea of how well it's going to protect your feet and your pants from water since we've got uh, a really wet day here Feeling pretty good and the fenders are fairly quiet too. Well you guys were a little bit wet but we basically made it back and Chris was pointing out that the front fender is is actually really low so it, it gives you more protection than a lot of other fenders that we looked at. Yeah I think it really works quite well in this sort of environment and uh, I'm pretty happy about that. You know keep your shoes dry and something that oftentimes you know regular fenders where they might end here or something like that they don't actually get all the way down there and um, you know, so I think that's something important to to consider, especially riding in a wet environment. This is just a perfect day. Yeah. To test this. I, I might need to get like an actual water resistant coat for next time, but I'm glad you guys could join us. As always, I appreciate feedback, corrections, comments and stuff. Maybe you live in the Netherlands and, and you own or enjoy this bike or you've had another gazelle and you appreciate it. I'll have the full written review with the width, the length, the weight, some of the other details we discussed back at electricbikereview.com. I hope you guys have fun out there. Ride safe, especially in the rain or dark or whatever. I love you, take care. See you next time. Hey guys, to help run the forums, host the website, and travel, we've introduced a universal service fee for in-depth coverage, including this video. My goal is to be unbiased and transparent. It's a privilege to serve you. This is not an endorsement. Let's get into it. Oh, does it feel like we're in the Netherlands, guys? 
We found a spot with a port. It's a little bit cloudy. It's even spitting a bit of rain here. Uh, we're checking out a bike from Gazelle. This is a Royal Dutch company from the Netherlands. They've been around since 1892. Uh, Royal Dutch is like this designation that the royal family gives to companies that are over 100 years old that have been doing a good job uh, representing the Netherlands and maybe being sustainable, that kind of thing. So pretty cool. I do mention that whenever we cover their bikes. I think it's special and they, they go through a lot of extra steps to create a bike that's high quality. Uh, even the paint, they do like UV testing and stuff. It's pretty significant. And in this case, I, I really like, you'll notice there's like a white cable here for the shifter cable and then there's a single white uh, bungee here for the rear rack. It's just like a little splash of style. Comes in three frame sizes. We're looking at the jeans blue and then they have like a coral red and ivory. So three color choices, three frame sizes. I'm on the medium size frame right now and it's feeling pretty good. I mean, these bikes are very comfortable. This one's approachable because it's a step through and they've got this double tubing right here. So that creates a little bit more stiffness. You don't get quite as much frame flex, but there still is a little bit of frame flex because of this rear rack mounted battery. Note that we have a power pack 500 in the battery bay, but it actually comes with a 400. What they've tried to do with this bike is bring down the price point. We're looking at another Gazelle over here, and this one's about a thousand dollars more. This is the Arroyo C8 HMB internally geared hub, mid-drive motor, Bosch. That's what that HMB stands for. So, you know, $3,600, whereas this one's $2,499. It still comes with the comprehensive two-year warranty, a lot of premium parts, and so I'm gonna dive into those, but I do wanna just highlight that again. There aren't too many kind of European higher-end electric bikes that are sold exclusively through dealers that have the great warranty with Bosch systems that are in that $2,500 price point, and that's, that's really a sweet spot for a lot of people. So some of the ways they brought it down is they've got the Power Pack 400 that we talked about before. They've got the Bosch Active Line Plus motor versus a performance line, but I'm glad that they didn't just go with straight up Active Line. Active Line Plus gives you a little bit more torque up to 50 Newton meters. It gives you 105 RPM cadence support versus just 100, which means you don't have to um, pedal at the higher gears in order to get full power. You can sort of adjust your gears. Say you're coming into a, a hilly section here, like there's actually a lighthouse right over there. You're going up the hill. I frequently downshift and sometimes the motor can't keep up if it if it doesn't have the higher RPM support. So I really like that. About 7.1 pounds on that. And then back here on the battery, 6.3 pounds on that. So the weight on this is definitely lower. The bike's about 50 pounds and it's got basically everything you need. I classify this as like commuter ready because it's got the plastic fenders right here. It's got the integrated lights, really nice lights. I like that this one has windows on the sides. It's got this rack that's rated up to 55 pounds. It has traditionally sized tubing so you can put panniers, pannier blockers. They've even got a built-in frame lock right here and it's keyed to match the battery pack. We've got reflective sidewalls on those tires, puncture resistant, and the tires that are on this bike right now, they say Continental, but I was talking with someone from Gazelle and just checking out their spec, and I think it's supposed to come with the Schwabi Energizer Plus, which is what this bike has. Both very good tires. And, and again, you kind of look at that bike, you look at this bike, you're getting a lot of the same stuff, like your, your experience is still going to be very good and I'm always impressed by things like this we've got these nice double walled aluminum alloy rims gazelle branded right here with reinforcement eyelets so that's that little circle right there so the rim won't crack if you're riding with heavier gear or just over the long term it's going to be a little bit a little bit sturdier Shimano hubs we've got these extra strong 14 gauge spokes 36 of them black rims machine sidewalls on these rims here because it has hydraulic rim brakes. This is the Magura HS22. Hydraulic is great because, you know, there's a longer distance between the rear brake versus the front brake. So a lot of times with mechanical brakes, the wire will stretch over time and it's just requires more hand effort. These ones require less hand effort. They're very consistent. They give you a lot of power when you brake and they've even got adjustable reach. So that's that little kind of like a barrel adjuster thing right here. So you can bring these in a little bit if you're someone with petite hands or maybe you're wearing gloves because it's raining and cold, which is the case right now. But again, we're doing great. I, I'm actually having fun with this. It's awesome to have bikes with fenders and lights on a day like today. And you know, it's kind of winter time when I'm filming this. So uh, it's just nice to have a bike that's 
that's ready. It's, it's equipped for that. You even got a little flick bell right here, adjustable angle stem. This is about 90 millimeters and it's a quill stem. So it kind of goes up and down as well as adjusting like that. And these nice ergonomic grips with the sweat back handlebars, really good ride feel. Um, it does have, I think this is Shimano Acera. Yeah. Trigger shifter, which is nice. Um, you know, nine speeds here. I was expecting two-way action on the high gear, but it doesn't. It just, you pull it, you can't push it, which, you know, it's it's minor. That's the way SRAM is on most of their stuff. So you still have multi-step. Three shifts with the low gear, a lightweight, decent Shimano Altus cassette in the rear, 11 to 36 tooth. So a decent spread right there, nine gears. That's great. That's plenty for getting around town, uh, climbing hills if you need to. And then a Dior derailleur. So this doesn't have a one-way clutch or some of the fancier stuff we see on mountain bikes or high-speed electric bikes, but it's definitely a step up, uh, something like the Tourney or the Altus or the Acera. This is Dior, so it's it's nicer, it's lightweight. You can even just looking at it, you get a, a sense for the higher quality. Uh, it's very traditional in terms of, again, rear hub here, uh, nine millimeter quick release skewer, quick release on the front too, so you can adjust that. Maybe take the wheels off to do quick quick service or something. That's always interesting to me because Right here with the seat clamp, we don't have quick release and maybe that keeps people from trying to take your saddle. 27.2 millimeters on that seat post right there versus the actual seat tube is like 29.8. Very unique size. I, I really haven't seen that anywhere else. And then see that silver piece, that's a shim. So they've adapted it to fit just right for this very traditional uh, seat post width. Now. I say traditional and I'm really calling this out because you could swap that out for a suspension seat post and then you can get that full suspension feel. We do have a really nice Selle Royale, sort of an upgraded saddle with the rubber bumpers and stuff, a little bit wider. It feels great. I mean, I, I'm not sure if you would really, depending on your, you know, your sidewalks or your streets, you may or may not actually need a seat post suspension. You do have a nice suspension fork up here. Um, I would call it basic. I mean, it's nice to have suspension, but it's basic. SR Suntour, this is the CR7V, and maybe that's designating like V brakes. In this case, it's actually, you know, it's the, the hydraulic rim brakes, um, whatever. 40 millimeters of travel, 25 millimeter stanchions. So they're just, they're kind of tiny. You know, you get up to mountain bikes and it's like 30 or 32 or 36, you know, really thick, and that's gonna reduce stiction. It's gonna give you that extra strength because they're longer travel. With this one being so short, I guess they're just saving material and weight, and it comes back to that 50 pound, uh, you know, weight of this bike. I, I think that's pretty fantastic. You know, overall, they've chosen really well on things. There are a couple compromises. There's no lockout here, but there is this preload adjustment. So if you weigh a little bit more, you can kind of preload that spring, and that way you're not going to be bottoming out or kind of bobbing as you pedal. So that's nice. There is a little bit of adjustment there, but otherwise a very basic fork, um, and then the headlight. As nice as it is to have those side windows, I'm just gonna power this up for a second here. There we go. See, it's got that side window, so it shines from the side in addition to the reflective tires. Um, it's attached to the arch of the suspension fork. So Chris, will you actually kind of push down on the, the top of the bike? See, so the bike is suspended and it's gonna go up and down, but the light's gonna go like this when you're going over bumps. And so there's a little bit more rattling. It'd be nice if this was up here or whatever. It's, it's a minor complaint just i'm kind of picking through this because so much of this bike is just perfect even on the fancier bike um, gazelle has mounted that on the moving portion of the suspension but both of these lights they point where you aim this one also has the side windows maybe a slightly nicer upgrade same thing on the rear the rear light over here you know on the Medeo t9 is it's just two LEDs, which is, I've seen some with just one. It's got a big reflective surface. It's below the battery, so it's not gonna get blocked by bags or anything like that. And then we've got this great kickstand. I love this. It's positioned well clear of the left crank arm and it's adjustable without using tools. So there's like these little dots on the backside that you can just kind of push in and then adjust this. And we did that in order to take pictures today and it's, it's working just really well. Um, seems like there's even an extra mounting point here. So maybe you could, put different widths, like a 20 millimeter and a 15 millimeter or something for different uh, different kickstands. Very cool. I think that's, that's a pretty good overview. Nice to see a little battery info, like LED readout there. We've got the, the locking port and stuff down here. Um, while, we're, while we're back at the motor here, it's just, it's so small, it's compact, it's quiet. 
but it's giving you the same advanced feedback with the motor controller that all the Bosch mid drives do. So it's measuring your rear wheel speed with that little sensor right there and that little magnet when it passes. It's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque over a thousand times per second, which is just phenomenal. And it has shift detection. So it's, it's actually measuring, like trying to reduce a surge as you pedal and you go like pressure, less pressure, pressure, less pressure. The, the motor is fairly consistent feeling. And then when it senses a spike in pressure, it says, oh, they must be shifting. I'm gonna ease off and try to take care of that drivetrain right there. And by the way, 38 tooth, steel chain ring in the front. We counted those teeth. It's got that nice plastic cover so your pants aren't gonna get all you know, wet and greasy and stuff. And that's, that's nice on a day like today where you're, maybe you're wearing pants or you've got versus shorts um, versus like a dress or something that could, could potentially get down here. You don't wanna get that, that tangled up and stuff. So you know, coming back to the, the price savings, we talked about the battery being lower capacity, 36 volts, 11 amp hours versus 13.4 on the power pack 500 and then it comes with a, a slightly smaller lighter weight slower charger so this is this the standard you know four amp charger that comes with the more expensive bikes um, one of my favorite chargers on the market because it's like 1.7 pounds and you know you just you fill faster and that's important if you've got a 500 watt hour battery pack in this case two amp chargers is, is kind of fine right but I was a little bit confused because it's like sportive trekking and trekking to, that's like touring and like going longer you're gonna need a couple battery packs if you really want to tour or go trekking with this thing but you know the point is i don't know I, I talked to one of the the gazelle guys earlier today and i was like what's the deal you know and he's like well we just want people to know this isn't just a cruiser you know it's fairly capable i think that's kind of a marketing thing personally because to me and I, i'd be proud of it i think this is kind of just a relaxed cruiser it could be a neighborhood or whatever i'm here with chris nolte from propel bikes hanging out in Long Beach. What do you think, man? Is this really sportive trekking or you were, we were both on that call. Yeah. I mean, well, it, it really depends. I mean, you know, some people are going to go trekking and that sort of thing on bike trails, which are mostly paved. I think that if you're going on more off-road stuff, you might want a little bit of a wider tire, some more yeah. suspension, different things like that. But I think it's becoming more and more common that people are doing this kind of lightweight, even like credit card touring, as it's called, oh, where yeah. you go and ride <laughs> to a hotel, stay overnight, that sort of thing. And We were talking about that yeah. on Catalina Island the other day. You yeah. were going with your wife and like having a day and exploring the island. This would be an excellent platform for that because you're upright, you're relaxed, you can enjoy the sights. But like you're saying, I mean, the tires on this, this is 700C. It's 28 inch by 1.75. So, you know, maybe you get up to two or even 2.125 and that gives you a bit more stability. This right. is about efficiency for me. Yeah, yeah, and I think this is this is just a really approachable bike that's pretty well-rounded and, and the reality is you can't do everything really well. Yeah. So I think they do many things well, but yeah, as far as, you know, being that more like off-road sort of trekking bike, it's maybe, maybe, for some people maybe it's, yeah. it's fine, but you know. I'm just so. teasing them because it's, you know, sportive yeah. trekking. It's like, uh, you know, this is their price point model, twenty four ninety nine, and it is great for what it is, but, um, you know, there, there is that little bit of frame flex and stuff. It's still great to have plenty of cargo capacity. One thing I feel like they're missing here though is bottle cage bosses. Like they could have put some up here, maybe right here. You can get those like anywhere adapters, but because this tube is a little bit elongated, kind of oval, you can see the internally routed um, cables and they've got that nice strip so they're easy to access. Um, I just feel like it would have been nice to have bosses so you could put like a folding lock or something. As is, you're gonna need like a trunk bag or you're gonna need to put them in, you know, like I'm wearing a backpack today. What other thoughts do you have about this bike that maybe you haven't heard me say today? I mean, you sell these, right? This is... Yeah, well, I mean, this is a new bike. We're particularly excited about it. Um, historically, we've had some other bikes in a similar sort of price point. And I think uh, one thing is interesting that they went with the external derailleur as opposed to internally geared hub. And I think hmm. it is, in that sense, a little bit more sporty. And maybe that's part of where that's these true. hints come from. Yeah, it's very quick, like responsive shifting right you know there there are some trade-offs with that because there's generally a little bit more maintenance involved but it but it is going to give you that more traditional bike feel um, which many people really appreciate particularly in the u.s where maybe you're not as used to an internally geared hub let's go back over here and, and check one of those out so what we have the shimano nexus here you know, it's got the, the grip shifter, the half grip shifter. You can shift it standstill, which is really nice. It's really clean, really durable. This one, eight speed. You know, it, it adds some weight, 
but you'll notice there's no derailleur hanging down here. So if you lock this thing at a rack and someone kicks it or knocks their bike, even if it tips, these tend to be very durable. And I, I you know, coming back to performance line motor, a little bit sportier, higher torque, that's 63 Newton meters of peak torque, 500 watt hours of battery, a display that's removable, right? That's a little bit bigger, that has a charging port. Those are some of the differences. We are gonna go into the display on the other bike in a minute, but what are the other things here? Like. Yeah, I think the one other detail that you talked about a little bit, but it's just the overall ride position. So this this bike has a adjustable stem. This one Not in particular has switch. this kind of quick adjust stem, so you can adjust it kind of very quickly on the fly, and you can you huh. know just go to these different positions. And that one is adjustable as well, but that one you you will need a tool to do that, so you don't have as quick an adjust. Um, but I think that's important. I think the overall the ride position is a really big deal i mean we see all the time people come in and they say well i like that bike but i don't want to ride you know all hunched <laughs> yeah. over like this you know and and i have problems with my back whatever this and that and this is really these bikes are designed to be ridden in that position it's certainly possible to take a more sporty bike and get you in a more upright position yeah, with a different stem it. different handlebars but there's always compromises with that. You know, you have to kind of uh, consider all the details, the overall ge geometry of the bike. Is it designed to be ridden in that way? Yeah. Um, so you really, really have to be careful about that. And I think they do that well. I mean, most of their bikes are designed in that way. Um, and the, you know, even like the fork, as you see, it kind of curves out a little oh, bit. it's raked out. Right, kind so of. So that gives oh. you a little bit more of a stable stance. Chris, and... I'm so glad, you know, like check this out. When you're pedaling, by having the wheel forward a little bit, you're not going to have that toe strike on the fender either. So that's another kind of a benefit. Of right, that. And, and that enables you to give, you know, a little bit more of an angle to the seat tube, which ultimately ends up making it easier for you to put your feet down. There's oh, some different yeah. details the minimum and saddle also height. put you in your, you know, slightly relaxed position. Dude, um, this is awesome. Yeah, you're, yeah. I mean, you're an expert and you get to see and hear people and what they say when they're test riding a lot. Yeah, so. the one thing that I would say, I mean, if, if I was to ride this bike myself, I'd probably want to add a suspension seat post because you are in that more upright seating position yeah as you're sitting more upright you're gonna put more weight on the saddle so um, you know and I, I understand it's probably a trade-off a little bit you know a price and that sort of thing but that's something you know like you said before you know it depends on the terrain if you're mostly flat and you know and you're, you're pretty healthy you know maybe you'll be fine without it but my preference would be to have it suspension post it's a good we both uh, you know i've i have some sort of back and neck injuries just from riding bikes and skiing and stuff growing up so yeah trying to take the edge off is always a, a good thing yeah. um would you do you sell any at your store and you recommend one that comes in 27.2 millimeters c post suspension yeah, I mean, the, the most popular one for us is the Connect previously body float. Um, it is on the pricier side, so if you're looking to save a couple bucks, you could would go with just a basic suspension post, which is going to really take most of the bumps out and that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, that's something like that, you know, 50 bucks or something like that. It's, it's really not bad, whereas the Connect is like $250. So it's got those special springs for different weights. Uh, one of the more popular ones as well is the uh, the Cane Creek uh, Thud Buster. Oh, the Thud Buster. They're my, yeah, they're kind of like yeah. my old school favorite. They've been <laughs> around for a long time. Okay, guys, we're gonna jump into the display <sighs> now that it's like turned off on us here. Uh, everything here, by the way, is, is very water resistant. So there's a power button right on top. This is the Bosch Purion display. Uh, it's their smallest, kind of simplest display. I pressed it just a second ago and boom, comes to life very quickly. You've got speed at the top. If you hold the minus button and you tap power, it'll change from miles per hour to kilometers per hour and back. So that's a nice little tip. Uh, down here, we've got kind of a, a readout that cycles through if you hold the minus button. Right now it's showing the trip distance, but if we hold minus for a second, it says total distance, od odometer hold it again it says range now range it's just blank right now because we're in off and this is just like a bicycle you could pedal this thing as a bicycle there's no reduction gear down here with the motor so there's no drag or anything happening it just free wheels very efficiently not going to slow you down at all it's just going to be a little heavy okay but as soon as we press that plus button we go up to eco mode range says 85 miles wow that's awesome and we take it all the way from tour to sport to turbo. Turbo is the highest level, 50 newton meters of support, 
700 or 270 uh, percent feedback now it says 32 miles so you can see there's a, there's quite the range there of range feedback uh, and it's based on like your last mile of riding right chris it's like real world the bosch system that's right yeah it's constantly updating which is really helpful when you're out there and trying to predict you know how long you're going to be able to go and there are so many factors i mean even if just having a wet sidewalk if your tires aren't inflated all the way if you're a heavier person maybe you've got cargo you could even potentially do like a child seat right here they have the ones that clip from the side the Thule yep uh seats so there's there's lots that you can do with this thing and then down here we have a battery infographic, very much like we saw before on the battery itself. Five ticks, 20% increments. It would be nice if that was a percentage or 10, 10 you know, ticks for 10%, but having the range menu kind of makes up for it in my mind. And then we have a light icon. If you hold the plus button, you can turn the lights on or off. So that's, that's sort of nice because there are moments where it's like, it's dark and you want it to be dark and the lights could be a little bit annoying. But on the other hand, it's nice to be seen and have that safety. And then there's a walk mode down here. So as long as you're not in off, if you press the walk and then you hold the plus button, the bike sort of pedals itself. And that's gonna be really handy if you're going up a hill or maybe cutting across the grass or you do get a flat tire or something like that. So that's a good overview. You know, again, you can see these two bikes back to back. The frame is just so beautiful over there on the Arroyo. It's a single tube, and, and I think it might even have a little bit more reinforcement. I don't remember having a ton of frame flex. This one definitely has some, but it's a lighter weight battery, and this one comes with a little suspension seat post built right in, and then that nicer display. One thing that they've got here is a little micro USB port that's active. That one has it, but it's only for diagnostics. And then this display also has a little power meter right there and then it's got a bunch of extra menus so it's like clock max speed average speed trip time and then there's even a shift recommendation so this is my favorite display and some shops can even upgrade you for a couple hundred bucks if you want that maybe you've got like some vision issues and you want the larger screen the Purion's fine you know it's it's easy to reach the buttons i i like the buttons on this one a little bit better they seem to be more consistent but Bosch is a leader in this space. They're part of the reason you get that really good two-year comprehensive warranty. And they had to do something to get, to get that lower price point. So this has been kind of fun. It's almost like a comparison review. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, there's a lot of those different details on the, on both of these here. So they really are. Oh, and you know what, Chris? We didn't actually take the battery off here. Again, one thing, you have to leave these keys in that cafe lock. So this just puts a bar through the rear wheel and so people can't move the bike away. So you have to lock it, and then the key comes out. We just unlock this for a second. Got it. Thank you so much for your help. It's kind of fun to see. And there's a handle built into the bottom of this thing and everything, it's, it's really good. So as far as these batteries go, keep it away from extreme heat. Uh, try to store it at half full or maybe, you know, 20 to 80% is sort of right. the sweet spot so it's not getting stressed. They do sell replacements of these and they have that upgraded Power Pack 500 so you could potentially get an extra and toss that in a trunk bag and then you've actually got a trekking bike right there. <laughs> there you, you can go, go touring. <laughs> And the cool thing about it, you can charge it on or off the bike. So when it's off the bike, this is the same port as over here. Which, oh, yeah. Which you would use to charge it when it's on the bike. It's a good point. And it's nice for people who maybe don't have room for a bike that's near an outlet if you have to actually park the bike outside at the rack. And again, that's why it's kind of nice to be able to take the display too. But, you know, these parts are replaceable if something were to happen. And then at least you're storing the most expensive part because I think these batteries are like 900 bucks or something. So... You, you know, it's a good idea to take that inside and charge it. Maybe even at work, you could bring it into the office. Okay, so we're back up here. We hit the power button. We do the kickstand. We're basically ready to go. Start it in off mode, take it up to turbo, and let's do it. We just paddle right along. Pretty stable, but you'll notice there's a little bit of wobble going on right now and that's the frame flex stuff. That's called speed wobble. So it has to do with me putting a lot of my body weight back um, and then having also the, the battery weight towards the back of the bike. It's not a huge deal. I mean, especially if you're holding onto the handlebars um, and again, depending on how you're positioning your body weight, but it is something I wanna call out because it's one of the trade-offs with that step through frame design um, that they've got going. And here's the you know frame flex thing. I can definitely feel it. It's hard to demonstrate when riding, but let's get, I, I wanna give you an idea of just how quickly it, sh it starts and stops with the motor. There we 
go. Got us up to like 18 miles per hour there, it looked like. You know, it's very capable, but this is a little bit more of a casual ride experience. Uh, and now we've got that, that huge hill right there up to the lighthouse, so I think I'm gonna downshift real quick here and just try to climb. It's doing a pretty good job. And this is pretty steep. I would not be able to do this sitting down on an unpowered bicycle, that is for sure. Uh, so when it comes to having a commute or maybe riding in an area where we just struggle or there's wind or something, these e-bikes are great. And even though this is, it's not the performance line motor, it's just the active line, it's still very capable, it still, still gets the job done. Here's that lighthouse I was telling you about. Pretty cool. Such a neat area around here, right? Birds and everything. Wow. I'm gonna do the off-road ride again. You hear a little bit of rattling because of those plastic fenders and stuff, but that's sort of to be expected. And plastic is a lot uh, lighter weight, fairly durable compared to aluminum, um, can kind of get bent out of shape and steel can rust. So for me, that's that's a pretty good thing. Chris, can we swap off and you hop on that one? Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. Take this one away. I have reviewed the Arroyo just a little while back. There we go. Sweet. Let me get in front of you real quick because I want to get that headlight again. Cool. Looking good. How's it feeling, man? Yeah, it feels, it feels really light and responsive. I, I like it. Yeah, I had that same feeling, to be honest with you. Like, I, you look at this, and I've been on a lot of these bigger cruiser bikes where it's kind of heavy, and it just doesn't feel like a bicycle. But this feels pretty natural, and that upright body position for me is, is really key. Did you plan it? I look at your helmet matches and everything. <laughs> Let's go out on this dock, if we can. Right. We got a little bit of brake squeaking because the wheels got wet. But we were riding earlier and they, they really weren't, so I was impressed with that too. Sometimes the rim brakes, you get a great mechanical advantage because you're grabbing way out at the edge of the wheel. Uh, but, you know, there there is that surface area ugh, compared to uh, like a disc brake or something. I just struck my heel on the rack when I was getting on and off, so that's the, that's the really, you know, like, like this, you know, that's something I call it. The whole point is this is like a step through. We and see I, it all the time. It's just so funny. It's just like, yeah, you know, you can just hop on and off like this. People I swinging it. <laughs> Trying to get over it. Okay, guys, from here you can see those hydraulic rim brakes and then that 40 millimeters of travel. I'm going to be going across the grass and uh, some of this dock wood so you can get a sense for what that looks like. Okay guys, from here you get that nice plastic chain cover, but there's a 38 tooth steel chain ring underneath, and then back here we've got 11 to 36 tooth cassette. You'll be able to see and hear me shifting through some of those gears, we got the shift detection in action, it's still a good idea to sort of ease off. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an interesting system because you can pedal backwards like that, and that's gonna allow you to do some drivetrain maintenance, but there's a little bit of friction there. It doesn't just like freewheel exactly. There's, it must be turning through the gears. And I've noticed when I'm pedaling and assist is kicked in, when I stop pedaling abruptly, I do feel a little bit of like a clunk. And I think it's that same friction, just sort of like 
pressing forward for a moment. So that's something that I noticed, and it's really only on the Bosch Active line because they use the full-size chain ring. Uh, but anyway, let's do this. I'm gonna be in the highest level of assist turbo, so it'll be the most pronounced, and yeah, shift through. One takeaway for me is that in order to climb the most efficiently, you really do need to be in a lower gear. And then to hit that 20 mile per hour top assisted speed, you've got to be in the higher gear. It's, you know, the cadence, you just, you kind of max out at that 105 and you can't just pedal faster. The motor stops supporting you. So you, you have to, you have to shift gears a little bit more actively with the active line motors from Bosch and the Yamaha PW system. It's got the, the lower uh, cadence support, so. This is great, man. I've had a, uh, a really good time with this bike and hanging out with you and doing the whole like rainy day review. Uh, but it's good, I, I think. Yeah, somebody lied to us. I mean, they say it never rains in Southern <laughs> California. I, I don't know what's going on. You got to keep it green. I keep it, it green. I guess it's better than the snow right now. But. Uh, guys, I have measured all the specs for this, uh, including like length, width, so you know if it'll fit into your garage. We weighed it myself 50 pounds. We weighed it a couple times to double check that. And uh, that's all back at electricbikereview.com. I welcome your comments as always. Sometimes I miss stuff or maybe you have a different opinion or you have experience because these are brand new bikes. So it's nice to hear from people who actually own it, maybe in the forums or whatever. Have fun out there. I love you guys. Ride safe. We'll see you next time. What is going on everybody? Tyson here with you. We're out in Santa Cruz, California. We've been cruising around, enjoying the sunshine. I'm hanging out here with Evout and Tina from Gazelle. We've been checking out the Gazelle Ultimate T10 HMB. T10 there meaning it's a 10 speed. HMB stands for Hybrid Mid-Drive Bosch. If you don't know anything about Gazelle, they're from the Netherlands and they've been in business a long time, since 1892. They actually are the recipient of, I believe it's called the Royal Dutch Award. And essentially to get this award, they only give it out to you know, one company or group within each industry. And you have to be making a, a big impact with kind of shaping the direction of it. And that's something that Gazelle has been really pivotal for. I'm gonna let, uh, I'll let Devout tell you a little bit about this. So you were talking to me earlier about how you guys have really helped to kind of shape the industry. And in the Netherlands, cycling is a lot more than just a hobby or a pastime. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, our main way of transportation. I think, uh, I don't know the details exactly, but I think people own three to four bikes uh, a person in the Netherlands. So uh, that's a lot of bikes. And, um, you know, when I used to live in Amsterdam, um, I would first think, how do I get there by bike instead of like my default of going by car? And um, that means uh, if you want to have more people on bikes, that means uh, that you have to make bikes really comfortable, I would say. And the infrastructure, of course, needs to be really good. And I think Gazelle over the last 127 years have been working really hard in making the bikes as comfortable as possible so that it could constantly like uh, contribute to your main mode of transportation and that is also our mission here in the u.s is uh, to uh, bring bikes to the u.s that uh, yeah make it easy on you to use and uh, hence the uh, low step frames uh, the more like upright seating position uh, because one of the other things that is uh, really contributing to like a 
upright seating position is the safety aspect. If you're much more upright, you can see much more what's happening around you. Whereas if you're sitting much more forward looking, you don't see all that much what happens behind you. And uh, yeah, that's where we, I think, uh, are very different from, let's say, more US-based brands, is that, uh, you know, we know what cycling is about uh, since we've been doing that for 127 years. Yeah, it's a huge legacy. And comfort is a big part of it, but also safety and reliability is a big thing. They do a lot of rigorous testing on their bikes for riding in humid and salty, you know, coastal type regions. Great for us here in Santa Cruz, of course. And yeah, it looks very similar yeah. to Amsterdam. <laughs> yeah. And it, uh, it really is, you can see that with how they back up their bikes. So for all the Gazelle bikes, you're looking at a two year comprehensive and 10 year warranty on the frame. So that is a solid warranty. That's one of the best ones out there. And for the one we're looking at here, the Ultimate T10 HMB, this is priced at $37.99, which is a little bit more than some of the competition out there, but you're also getting a lot more than some of the competition out there. This is what I would call a purpose-designed, feature-rich electric bike. Purpose-designed, meaning you've got a lot of components like the tires here, these Energizer Plus from Schwalbe that are specifically for e-bikes. And the chain is also thicker and stronger to put up with the increased stress that it gets on it from that mid-mount motor. Things like that are purpose-designed. It's built as an e-bike as opposed to someone taking a regular bike, slapping on some other components. You can see it in the frame as well, which we'll talk about in a bit. And the feature rich part, we'll talk about all these in detail a bit here, but I mean, check it out. You've got the integrated aluminum alloy fenders, front and rear. Those are nice, sturdy fenders and they do a great job of coverage as well. We see some bikes where they have, you know, a half of that covered, so they don't do quite as good of a job. They've got the plastic flaps on the end for some extra protection there. And, you know, you've got the rear rack back here. You've got integrated headlights, front and rear. They're battery integrated. The one up front, that's the Axa Blue Line. That's a really bright light, has the side cutouts for some extra safety, side visibility, you know, reflective striping on the sidewalls, adjustable length kickstand back here that is also rear mounted so you don't get pedal lock if you're moving the bike backwards, you know, in the garage or at the bike rack or something like that. So really went the whole nine yards with all the different components on here. So, all right, let's go ahead and dive in and look at some of these in detail. Now they've got two colors. There's also the champion red. Both of them have this nice glossy finish to it. I really like the white because that gives you even more visibility at night and stands out great during the day as well. Now you've got a few different frame sizes on here. We're looking at a large one. This is the 57 centimeter and so you could also go down to a medium or a small if you'd like to. Very approachable here. We've got the step throughs. You can see it's a great standover height of just 18 inches. And so you can adjust it a lot. Of course, you can adjust the seat. And then you've got a lot of range of adjustability here in the stem. If you check this out, huge, uh, huge degree range that you can tweak that to fit your riding style and you, what size of a person you are. Really, my only gripe with it is that it's a tool adjustable one. This isn't a big deal, but you have to bust out your Allen wrenches to be able to adjust this and also the seat on there as well. And maybe you can tell me about uh, why did you guys decide not to do the quick release for the seat? Is that just like an anti-theft thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, once you set it up once, uh, you're good to go, I would say. And uh, if you have a quick uh, adjust and yeah, then you can get it stolen as well, right? Yeah, and especially when you've got a, a better than average seat on here. This is the Sailor Royale, so they're a little bit softer, a little bit bigger. That gives you some more comfort so you can ride longer. And you could, of course, if you want, upgrade that to a suspension seat post to get a little bit more cushioning. And if you did that, you would really be appreciating that you didn't have quick release here, because that is a bit of a high dollar item. People might want to try and steal that. And speaking of security, the bike is security conscious in general, which is awesome. Check this out. We've got the Axa Defender. This is a cafe lock here. So this is handy if you're you know you stopped at the store and you just need to run inside and grab one thing and you're gonna be right back out you can use this and actually um, about can I get you over here to do this since I have uh, one hand busy yeah exactly so you have to turn around pick up the key and then you uh, pull the come over here on this side yeah. so you turn around the key and then you uh, turn this lever down you uh, put the key in the old position again and pull that out and we'll and let uh, you get a look right back here as you can see it puts this bar right through the spokes there yeah and the great thing there's uh, accessories that be sold uh, that you could put like a, an extra chain key in there so uh, then you basically lock your rear wheel but you can also have like a chain going around like a you know a, 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 like a lamppost or something yeah so that's that is an awesome security feature there just a little bit extra and then if you want to leave that locked so i can have the key out of that yeah absolutely 
So this is another great thing about these is that they're keyed alike. So same key for the axle lock and the battery. Now, really my only gripe about this is you, you have to lock it to take the key out. And if you want it to be unlocked, the key has got to be in there. And that can be a little bit frustrating if you like to keep it on a keychain because you have to you know, put it back on the keychain, take it off the keychain. Easy way, low tech solution, just get a little uh, carabiner to put this on that you can clip it onto your keychain easy so that you don't lose it. And so we can use this right here to take the battery out. And I'll turn that once here. And so it's got a two-step removal process. Might be a little challenging with one hand. We'll see if I can do it here. So after you unlock it with the key, then there is a tab right here to depress, and that will let you remove the battery. I think I'll need, uh, yeah. if you would turn the key there so it'll release all the way. There we go. So it's two-step removal process, keeps the battery in there secure, which is awesome. This is the Bosch PowerTube 500. So it's approximately 500 watt hours. It's really about 482, 36 volt, 13.4 amp hour. And this is the newer generation for Bosch. So they used to have the power pack and those ones, instead of being mounted in the frame, they would sit on top of the frame, on top of the down tube. And they're a little bit more interchangeable, really easy to swap between all kinds of different bikes. The power tube is technically interchangeable, but there's a lot of customization to it. So manufacturers can design their own top covers for it. And then you also have, you know, there's some vertical mount ones and some side mount ones. So not as interchangeable, but I think they integrate a lot more smoothly. And I've always thought that interchanging your batteries was a little bit more of an edge case. So I appreciate how cleanly it integrates into the down tube. Da -da. It's challenging with one hand. <laughs> All right, and so check that out. It just it fits in there nice and snug, gives it a nice sleek look. And it, it's not to say that it is a stealthy bike. You know, we're not trying to make it look like not an e-bike at all. It is most definitely an e-bike. It just integrates nicely and smoothly. I love the visual footprint. And while we're down here, we can talk a little bit about the Bosch Performance Line motor. So this is Generation 3, Bosch Performance Line 3.0. You know, with every generation of them, they increase the power a little bit, reduce the weight and everything. We're looking at about 8.8 .8 pounds on this one. Uh, I think they're 300% power output, right? Yeah. And up to 120 RPMs for your maximum pedal cadence, which is awesome. And this motor in particular, this is a really quiet motor. Some of that is just improvements Bosch has made, but something we've got going on here that I think is awesome is, and it's gonna be a little hard to see because we've got this awesome chain cover here, but we're working with a, is it a 36 tooth chain ring? Does that sound right? Yeah. And uh, that's also because uh, they basically went uh, from like a gearing down ratio within the motor. Mm -hmm. They went uh, on a one-on-one -on -one gear ratio basically. So the chain wheel on the front cog will be a little bit bigger, uh, but that means that there's less, um, you know, um, uh, part within the motor, which makes the motor lighter and uh, less noisy. Yes, and another great thing that this does, uh, having the full-size chain ring up here, the, what he was talking about on the inside, Court and I will usually call that reduction gearing, where you pedal one revolution of the crank arms and then the chain ring, the smaller chain ring would go around you know, two and a half times or something like that. And those reduction gears actually add a bit of drag as well. So if you were pedaling without electric assistance or if you pushed beyond 20 miles per hour, then that would push up into, you're just pedaling by yourself then, so you'd get just a little bit of a drag on it. And so that could be just a little bit frustrating. They say that it would help out with tension on the chain and things like that, but I prefer this setup where we have bigger chain ring, one-to-one -one ratio, no drag at all. We've got a thicker and more sturdy chain ring on here that helps out as well, you know, e-bike rated. And the shifting system here, since we're over here, let's take a look. We're looking at a Shimano Dior XT. This is top of the line stuff. We see it a lot on mountain bikes actually. So the cassette back here, 11 to 36 teeth on that cassette there, 10 speed, so a one by 10. Awesome performance from the Dior XT. It does, and that range is big enough that you can climb some really steep hills. And we do that on the ride test. We climbed an insanely steep hill and I was able to make it up with just one hand on the handlebars as well. So fantastic there. And about, we were talking a little bit about this before, but this is really like a, a trekking bike, kind of multi-purpose. You could use it for some commuting, but you could also go like, you know, on some 
you know, not quite mountain biking, but get out a little bit more and do some trails and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, it brings you out to different places. And I would say um, we have a Gazelle Elite, a Royal Elite, which is like our most comfortable bike. Uh, we have our more sportier bikes, uh, which are the Citizen, and we have some other uh, uh, sportier bikes coming uh, in 2020. And this bike actually really fits in between. So we always say you have your comfort category, where you have, let's say, your uh, Easy Flow and your uh, Arroyo Elite. And uh, this is uh, the active category, so it really takes you to different places. It's not as rigid as a sportive bike, but it's also not as comfortable as the Arroyo Elite. It really hits a nice middle ground. I've been riding it around quite a bit already, and I love the riding position. It, you could adjust the handlebars a bit. As you can see here, I've got them a little bit more forward, and I, I like the forward riding style better, but it'd be pretty easy to adjust those up higher, have a little bit more upright. You're still not quite in the like upright, relaxed cruiser style, but you can tweak that a little bit depending on how much comfort you want in the ride. And you can take this all kinds of places. So we've got the suspension up here that's the, the mono shock here. You get about 30 millimeters of travel on that. That really helps helps to cushion on those bumps. And then, like I mentioned, you could add a suspension seat post on the back if you want to. The tread on these tires are great for multi-purpose as well. If you check this out, we have the bigger tread pattern in the middle. So this helps to reduce some of that drag and friction if you're, say, just riding on paved roads and you want more speed and efficiency. And then we've got a little bit more aggressive tread on the sides. Helps out if you're riding on some dirt or something like that, need a little extra traction, especially when turning. That will, especially like if you're turning and riding in rain or something like that, that helps to keep you safe. We mentioned these tires already. These are awesome Schwalbe tires, the Energizer Plus. So in addition to that reflective striping along here, they have their highest level of puncture protection as well. I forget, uh, there it is right there, G-Guard 5 puncture protection. But you can take that pretty much anywhere and not have to worry about getting a flat. Awesome if you, you know, I'm in Colorado, we have tons of goat heads everywhere. And so you pretty much have to have puncture protection if you're gonna be out riding. So love to see that here. Uh, backing up a little bit so we can talk about some more components on the bike. We talked about the Dior group set for shifting. The brakes here are Shimano as well. These are the MT420s. This is another component that you see a lot on mountain biking setups. So you get solid performance out of here. Two finger levers that are easy to actuate thanks to it being hydraulic disc brakes. And they are fully adjustable for you know the reach and angle and everything. You need a tool to do that, of course, but you can tweak those to fit your hand size and preferred position. And the rotors here, we're looking at 180 millimeters on the front and then 160 on the back. Dual piston calipers, solid stopping power from these. You know, like I said, this is something that we even see on mountain bikes that are gonna be stopping on some really steep slopes. So these will be able to handle anything that you throw at them. And we mentioned the rear rack. It's a little bit higher weight capacity than standard. You know, standard on rear racks is 27, or excuse me, 25 kilograms. This one's actually up at 27. You get the bungee clamp on the top right here so that you can strap stuff down. And of course, you know, pannier hangers and you've got some latch points for bungees and everything else there. So a lot of options for tying stuff down. As you can see right here, it's integrated onto that aluminum fender. I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but there is a support running right underneath here that connects it to the frame. So if you're like me and saw that and were a little worried about the stability of it, they've got it connected to the frame well. That's gonna keep it from uh, you know bending or jostling around if you've got something rather heavy on the back there. And the kickstand here as well, these are fantastic kickstands. They're Ursus, Ursus Moy, is that right? Yeah. And they're adjustable for the length on these without needing a tool. There's a little kind of a button on the underside here. There it is. So you can press that and just adjust it on the fly. Great if you need to park it on a slope or something like that. All right, guys, so we're going to spend some time going over the cockpit here so you can get familiar with it. The grips on here, we've got ergonomic locking grips. They're rubberized, got the nice two-tone colors going on. Nice and comfy grips. They feel soft. I appreciate that they're locking with ergonomic grips. It's really easy to you know, if you're, especially if you're going up a hill or something, to be leaning into those a bit and to turn those all askew. Appreciate the locking on here. We've got a flick bell on the right, and then the Shimano trigger shifters right here for that Dior XT. Uh, they've got a gearing readout window, which you can see along the top right here. Does not have any numbers on it, but it still serves to give you a rough idea of where you're at. And then I'm moving over here to the control pad. This is the Bosch Purion display. And so it's not as fancy as their 
I like their Intuvia display. That one's a little bit bigger, got more details, got the USB charging port. This one does have a USB port right here, but that's really only for diagnostics and firmware updates and that kind of stuff. So no charging your devices on here. And so we'll fire this up. The power button's right along the top here. And actually you can also, if you want, you can fire up the bike by pressing the power button right down here on the battery. There we go. Nice thing that you can do on these Bosch systems. So as you can see, we've got the speed readout right there and then it fires up and off. That means no assist at all. If you wanna change up your level of assist, you have the up and down right here. You can go up through Eco, Tour, Sport, and Turbo, highest level of assist. We've got the battery readout right here. One, two, three, four, five bars on that. So that gets the job done. Yeah, we say this a lot. We prefer a percentage just because it's a little bit more precise, but five bars is still pretty good. It'll give you a rough idea of where you're at. And this is a pretty long range bike too. You're looking at, if you're riding with some pretty high levels of assist, maybe up some steep hills, maybe a 30 mile range. And then on the higher end, if you're more flat ground riding an eco, you could get a lot further, maybe 60 to 70 miles. So this bike is pretty easily going to outrange how long you want to be sitting in the saddle. So I think that is awesome. We've got some other features on here we can talk about. You can hold down the up or the plus there to turn the lights off and on. And I think I just turned them oh, up there. So it turns on your headlight there and your tail light as well. And I'm not sure how well it'll show up on the camera, but I can even see these in the broad daylight. Nice bright lights. That is fantastic. We can hold that down again to turn off those headlights. You can see the indicator goes away right there. And we'll see if I can remember. I think we can hold down minus here to cycle. Yep, there we go. We can get the trip distance and the total distance or the odometer and then range. So that is, I guess that's estimating the effective range for how long you can ride at the current assist level. That is pretty cool. So if we were to, let's get back out here to the main screen. So we're in turbo. Let's go ahead and change that down to eco. And then we'll hold minus a couple times here to get over to that range setting. And check it out, up to 28 miles from 14. So that is awesome. And to me, that more than makes up for not having a precise battery readout. If you can just click over there and check your range, that'll, that's much easier than having to look at a battery percentage and say, well, I think I can make it this many miles. This just gives it to you straight. So I really appreciate that. And I mentioned that this Purion display is not quite as full featured as the Intuvia. The nice thing with Bosch systems is you can you can upgrade that. There's a lot of bike dealers that will give you an upgrade to Intuvia if you want. You can get it for like 200 bucks, including the labor. So if that's something you're really attached to, you can do that. But I think that this more than gets the job done. Uh, we've got one more button on here we didn't mention, which is the walk mode, of course, which you can hold down to move the bike forward at a slow pace. Awesome if you, you know, walk in with a friend or something like that. Okay, guys, so we got a few more things to talk about that make this bike special. And looking at the frame here, this is a, and I mentioned this already, it's a really sturdy frame for a mid-step. Really no noticeable frame flex. I was impressed with it, I was cruising around on it. And part of what helps to make it so stable, we've got this, uh, what would you call it? It's like a, the hydroformed. Uh, so we've got the entire like headset area right up here is, is one piece. And then down here on the bottom bracket as well, similar thing. And you can actually see some weld points here. They're really subtle, but we've in this middle section right here, it's essentially like a double walled down tube. Helps to give it some extra support. And you can tell they've really put a lot of work into strengthening this. It, you know, some of it is for style. It looks really nice. We got the branding up here, but that extra size to it, the single uh, single formed pieces on the top and bottom, and then having those double walls really gives it some extra sturdiness. And of course, we got to mention, we've got bottle cage bosses on here. Love to see it on a mid-step. And as you know, for us at EBR, that's a big, we really love to see those, not just for bottle cages, but there's all kinds of things that you can attach there, third-party stuff. So I appreciate that they included those as well. You know, of course, we've got all the attachment points for the rack and the fenders and everything else, just in case you wanted to get creative there. And let's check out this fork before we move on. So take a look at just the low profile on this. It is really thin. You know, you look at it from the side, it looks a bit more standard. They did an awesome job cutting it out right here. That makes it a little bit more aerodynamic and just a really nice visual footprint. You know, it may not make a huge difference when you're riding in terms of the aerodynamic nature, but every little bit helps. I really appreciate that extra touch. And then uh, we haven't looked at the charging port here. That is right over here on the right side of the bike. 
so you can plug in there it's a great location for it because that keeps it away from the crank arms down here so that you don't have to worry about you know accidentally hitting that while you're moving the bike around in your garage or something like that don't have to worry about damaging the cord nearly as much so i really appreciate that and we're going to pop the battery out here because we didn't mention this when we were looking at it earlier but you can charge off the bike as well too got that exact same charge port right here that way if you you know you're storing the bike in your garage maybe it's in winter so it's cold or summer so it's really hot you don't want your battery sitting in those temperature fluctuations kind of a room temperature is what you want to keep those at so you can bring it inside charge it with you that is awesome and speaking of charging we've got the charger here so you guys can take a look at it uh, standard Bosch 4 amp charger so this is going to be quite a bit faster than the standard for a lot of e-bikes which is 2 amps a lot faster charging and it still only weighs 1.6 pounds so we're getting essentially double the standard charging speed for you know maybe 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 pounds more than most standard chargers so that is awesome small enough that you can toss it in a bag and carry it with you like we've been doing today okay guys we're redoing the range or the the climb test here actually down in first gear this time instead of in second so here is the hill not sure what the grade is but it's steeper than anything that i've seen before and i've done this once before i was actually in second gear i didn't realize it last time made it a little harder for myself than i needed to so i'm down in first this time but i'm definitely you know putting some work in but really cruising right up this hill and this is steep enough here that this would be this would be pretty intense even to walk up honestly much less bike I think it says a lot that I'm able to make it up here, you know, using just one hand. And I'm still sitting down, I'm not standing up, which is awesome. Normally you'd have to really stand up and get pumping on there. Oh, we're almost there. All right, yeah, not too shabby. Made it up to the top pretty easy. Well, wheel back around so you can get a look at it but yeah fantastic climbing power from that motor all right guys so the hill climb test is over for now we're just cruising around some peaceful neighborhoods here in santa cruz i am riding the ultimate still of course and we've got about here which bike are you riding i'm driving the uh Medeo. oh yeah t9 with connected flying plugs 400 watt hour battery very, yeah, like it's the end of our entry point price bike, and uh, yeah, it's just a really smooth bike. And really, all of these so smooth, so quiet. Which one are you on, Tina? That was is that the I'm Citizen? On the Arroyo, oh, that's the Arroyo, that's right. Yep, oh, our yeah, best selling bike and our best selling color, which we call Petrol. Ah, that's right. The the petrol couch I heard you calling it <laughs> for the nice, comfy it's ride. Very, it's very comfortable. That's a it's like a quality name, I like that a lot. I'm going to shift this down to Eco so you guys can check out just how quiet it is. You know, we have the Bosch performance line on here. This is not the speed, just the standard Bosch performance line. Really quiet. Does an awesome job. We have a full chain ring down here. I think it's 36 teeth as opposed to having a small one with reduction gearing. So that cuts down on the drag and the volume as well. So we'll take off here just so you can hear an Eco. Switch the camera over here. All right, I'm ready to follow you guys. All right, so that was an Eco. I'm gonna go ahead and switch that up to turbo, the highest level. And we'll do that again off the start, just so you can hear the difference in volume. I mean, of course, we're gonna be getting a lot more power on this one. And also quieter. I feel like every time it's like, listen to the motor, and then the truck started up. I was like, yeah. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to the motor. <laughs> okay, we're away from some of the louder traffic so that you can hear the motor while we're riding in turbo. So as you can hear, or rather not hear, as may be the case, really quiet even when we're in turbo. 
very responsive. I mean, that's a great thing about the Bosch performance line. We're measuring cadence and torque and wheel speed. So it kicks in virtually right away. And then the same thing for stopping, pretty much instant. And you can see, easy to see display. That's a nice thing with the Bosch Purion here. It's the grayscale monochrome. So even in direct sunlight, really easy to see. Not as simple as some of the others from Bosch, uh, like the Intuvia, but really gets the job done a little bit more of a sleek, minimalist look to it. The balance on this bike, excellent. Very low frame flex. It is a step through, but they've done such a good job to strengthen and really make the, a rigid frame here. So riding no handed, no problem on it. Eee. Sorry! <laughs> Left Tina behind there. So now these Bosch motors have software driven shift detection, but your mileage may vary with that. It's not perfect. So keep that in mind. You want to ease off on those pedals when you're shifting here. We always say about 30 to like 60, 70 miles. Okay, yeah. Um, and that would be, of course, um, on flat terrain. Mm -hmm. but I think, flat uh, terrain and yeah. eco. Yeah, and eco. But I would say safely, would say 30 miles with some hills, uh, turbo. Uh, yeah, you definitely be fine. Aggressive use of the assist system. Yeah. Which is an awesome range, guys, and something you got to remember when we're talking about range on these. Yeah, you know, this bike may be able to do 30 miles with a lot of assist, but how long can you do? You know, it's you can think about the the battery range, and then you know, what's your effective butt range, as they call it on the forum. Because if you don't want to be sitting in the saddle for 30 miles, then you don't even need to worry about that. But if you need to, 30 miles to maybe even up to 60, 70, if you're good terrain and cruising along in eco mode instead of turbo. You know, that's probably the most asked question at electric bike shops is what's the range on it and there's no right answer like it's there's a ton of factors there's how big of a person you are there's the specifics of the bike there's what kind of terrain you're riding on how much you're pedaling it's really sky's the limit mentioned this before but I love just how stable this bike is riding no-handed very easy and you saw on that stretch right back there I mean I was flying down that I actually got up over 30 miles an hour coasting I was still able to do that and feel stable and secure even riding with just one hand so I think that really says a lot about the sturdiness of the frame and just how stable the bike feels in general Thank you. Oh, you got an e-bike too. Check it out. We got all the electric vehicles going through here. Got to got to capture this part right here. This is a Why important part of the gazelle tradition is lugging your own bike up and down the stairs. A little bit of extra exercise. Why would you uh, use the elevator, right? Exactly. This is why they're in better shape than all the competitors out there. <laughs> And see, check this out. After you get it up the stairs, you can just ride around in the office. <laughs> Not the best spot for turbo mode. Got Ducatis all over the place. Yeah, this is definitely a perk. It is getting a cruise. Look at this, huge hallways. This used to be a Wrigley gum factory. And now they got all kinds of different bike groups and various other companies sharing the space. All right, guys, so that does it for this bike. Again, this was the Gazelle Ultimate T10 HMB. We've got the full written review, write-up, specs, measurements, everything you could want back at electricbikereview.com. We've also got the forum there. We've got a sub forum for Gazelle where you can connect with other owners and talk about your experience and maybe modifications, that kind of fun stuff. 
All right, guys, thanks for joining us. And as always, ride safe and we'll see you out there next time.